Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna take you through all the new releases that I have managed to get my hands on here in May. I'm gonna be explaining what they're all like, my first impressions, and as always, I'll leave links to where you can buy these in the UK, USA, and Europe down below in the description box. If you are new to my channel, then hi, hello, we're all about perfumes here. So do check out my hundreds and hundreds of other videos and I'll leave the links to my similar videos to this about new perfumes from the previous months linked down below for you as well if you didn't catch them. And if you're a regular but you haven't subscribed yet, then do hit that subscribe button and show your support. I really appreciate it. Cool, so I think I'm gonna start with my favorite new release which is the new limited edition from the Mugler Angel range, and it is their Iced Star. So every year they bring out a new limited edition summer version of Angel, and Angel is their iconic, best-selling, praline and patchouli, very heavy perfume. And these summer versions tend to be much lighter and funner and it's a way of getting some of that signature angel smell but with all these funner notes added and this year they've really measured on coconut and pineapple in here so this is basically like a pina colada in a perfume it's the perfect vacation smell hot weather fun summer holiday smell in my opinion and i love the bottle they are always beautiful. Last year's bottle looked very similar to this. Last year's was called Angel Au Crozier 2020. So be careful you don't end up buying that instead of Ice Star because it looked very similar. It's just these three colors were in a different order. Then the year before that was like a yellowy orangey color. But this new one, I love the name Ice Star. I love the smell. I love everything about it. I think it's so much fun. It just comes in this one size 50 ml limited edition and they do tend to disappear quite quickly. So if you do like this then I'd say get your hands on it as soon as possible. This is out in Europe. I'm not sure it's out in America yet but I will when it is out I will leave a link and let you guys know. I will keep the links updated down below. Definitely think this is good. It's great for lasting, good projection. Even though it's an eau de toilette, it's still really good for that, as most Mugler perfumes are. And it actually inspired me to just do a video on all coconut perfumes, my favourite ones. So I'll leave that linked as well if you're interested in coconut fragrances. So next one is, I think, my second favourite release from the month. And this is the new Kate Spade perfume called simply Kate Spade New York. There have been previous Kate Spade's perfumes, but I think that they've all been discontinued. And now we just have this new one named after the brand. It's a really nice, like, heavy bottle with a thick lid. The packaging is super nice. You have the iconic Kate Spade pattern on it, it's all very pink and pretty. Then the main note that this smells of is wild strawberries, which is a fragrance note which I really like. I like strawberry in fragrances, like it's in one of my favorites, YSL Mon Paris, but in here it's wild strawberry, which is slightly different. It's not quite as sweet, it's a little bit greener and a bit warmer than a normal strawberry fragrance note. I found this very similar to the new Marc Jacobs Daisy Intense, which is also a wild strawberry perfume. And they're kind of similar price. I think this might be a little bit more affordable, but I do really like this. It also has a fresh citrusiness at first, but then you just get this warm strawberry scent which I think is really feminine, but slightly interesting and sexy because it's got that bit of the sweetness in of like a fruity sweetness. But I think it's really nice. I think you could wear this at any age. I'd say it's probably more of a daytime perfume than a nighttime smell, but it is pretty good for lasting. It's an eau de parfum. And when I smell it, <clears throat> when I smell this, I immediately think of being outside watching Wimbledon, having strawberries and cream, which is traditional for watching the, the tennis. And it just reminds me of that like summer, but sweet fruity smells. Perhaps a strawberry in your champagne glass. I just really like it. I'm really loving Kate Spade at the moment. I think I've always loved playing card symbols and I love the spade and I think because I really like this perfume as well it's just 
yeah I'm having a Kate Spade moment but yes really like this definitely try it and I've seen quite a few comments from you guys saying that you've tried this and fallen in love it is just one of those fragrances I think that you can really easily fall in love with so next we have a new one from DKNY and this is also a coconut perfume it's called DKNY Be Delicious Coconuts About Summer now this seems to be a very limited edition it seems to be sold out a lot of places not many places selling it and I haven't been able to find it being sold in the US yet but where I do find it, I'll leave the links down below in the description. This is their summer fragrance for this year, and of course it has coconuts in, hence the name, but it's quite a green apple coconut, so you do get the Be Delicious signature thirst quenching green apple smell in there with the coconut. So if you are someone that finds coconut a bit heavy, a bit sickly, this is one of the more fruitier coconut perfumes I've smelled because it really does have that freshness in. It's also fairly light given it's an eau de toilette. I'd say it's heavier than most of the other Be Delicious ones which are very light because coconut is such a powerful smell. It does help this have a bit more projection and have a bit more like body to it but it is lighter than most other perfumes where coconut is the main note if that makes sense. So definitely one to try if you ha like are a fan of, of Be Delicious and if you can get your hands on it, but uh, this seems to ha be, have come and gone very quickly. So next we have a new release from Paco Rabanne in their Lady Million range. There's been quite a few now in this range. This one is called Lady Million Fabulous and it has this dark black colour in the bottle and you can also see the black on the box and the larger versions have that same black there on the gold bit as well. It's quite a warm fragrance, it has a fair amount of tonka bean in. Personally I think this is more of a autumn winter smell um, and definitely more of an evening than a daytime smell with that tonka bean, it's quite sexy, reminds me a bit of Jimmy Choo Fever. You've then got some tuberose and jasmine, so a nod to the white florals of the original Lady Million. And then you also have this solanotin, which gives it a very warm, cuddly feeling to it. Again, perfect for winter time, I think. But if you're a fan of Lady Million Original, you'll probably like this, or the um, bronzy coloured one they brought out. It's got that sexiness, that warmth to it, and I guess it would be fun to collect all the different colours of these, because there's quite a, a variety of them now that have come out. So I think this is quite good, I think it'll do quite well. It's better than some of the other flankers that have come out in the range, but it's nothing groundbreaking, it's nothing super unique. Next we have a new one from Izzy Miyake called A Drop de Izzy. So this has a really unique sort of flying saucer shape, it's kind of like a raindrop in your hand. And this is a lilac perfume, so perfect for this time of year. It's kind of musky and it's kind of milky as well with some almond milk in here so this is a very pretty very flowery smell but very good for lasting. Izumiyaki are amazing at creating perfumes that last really well and this is no exception. Lilac is quite a difficult note to get in perfumes and make it last. It's quite a weak smell and I think they've done really well here at really making it stick and stay. And this is probably one of, if not the best, lilac dedicated perfumes I've ever smelled. So if you've been looking for lilac then your perfume has arrived. I think this will do very well. I think it will stick around and become one of Izzy Miyake's good selling perfumes that people will talk about for a long time because it's different, it's good quality, good projection and the bottle is cool. Um, so definitely one to watch there and definitely one to try if you like your feminine, flowery, sort of English country garden flower smells. Next we have a new one from Elizabeth Arden which is their white tea Ginger Lily. There's already a original white tea of course and then three others that they brought out, a rose and orange. Now we have this Ginger Lily one and this is a really refreshing everyday scent, very feminine. It kind of reminds me a bit of a spa or something you'd spray after you've just had a facial or something. It's that kind of like refreshing, expensive smelling smell. 
has a fair amount of fresh citrus in but it's a bitter orange citrus and of course ginger hence the name which give it a real fresh clean sharpness i think when I, if i was wearing this i'd feel very very clean it'd be perfect after a shower to feel really womanly classy and very clean and fresh it would be perfect for humid weather when you want something that makes you feel clean even though it's so humid everywhere it's that kind of smell and i find that the white tea fragrances in general have that kind of spa day classy smell to them they're all eau de toilettes and quite good for mixing i'd say and layering with other fragrances or wearing sort of during the day easy going around the house very simple but very pretty nice formulations and then lastly we have a new one from Tommy Hilfiger called Tommy Now Then and this is a unisex fragrance that is in the line of the fragrances they released a few years ago where they did a female and a male one, Tommy Now. Tommy Now Then, the idea is that it's unisex like bringing the two together. Personally I find this more of a male fragrance than a female fragrance because it's really heavy on the cardamom, you have a woodiness to it. You have ginger in here and even though they have included some female you know flowers in here like geranium to me they don't really come through and the cardamom is totally the star of the show which is to me very quite a masculine it reminds me of like a sporty masculine fragrance so definitely for someone if you're a woman that likes the more masculine end the more aromatic cardamom end of fragrances or for a man, I think any man would like this. It's quite a nice gift. It just comes in this one size 100 mil, quite nice packaging. And I ordered it from Tino and I got this free shower gel with it as well. So it's quite nice, like Father's Day coming up, it'd be quite a nice gift. Um, but yeah, personally, I don't think this is unisex. I think it's really more manly. Cool, so those are all the new releases that have come out recently. Let me know if you've tried any of these, what do you think of them, which is your favourite. Like I said, I'll leave the links to where you can buy all these down below in the description and keep them updated. And there are plenty of more new releases on the way, which I'll try and get my hands on for videos coming soon, so watch out for them. But that's it guys, so thanks so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!